Hi, George here. And today we're going to be doing what is probably the most important single thing you can learn about how to use Photoshop Elements if you want to do the kind of projects that I'm doing all the time here on YouTube, and that's to remove the background from an image, making it transparent. I do it in almost every single one of my projects that's in there someplace. And for the thumbnails I do for my different channels here on YouTube, again, almost always doing this basic trick. So there we go with the background removed. Now, since this is almost Christmas time, we'll take this one step further and make a basic Christmas card out of this as well, just like that. Easy to do. So let's go ahead and get to work on these steps. Now I'll be starting from a brand new file. Let's just close this one down. I'm not going to bother saving that. And I'll open this one up. Here's the image I use. Go ahead and use your own image. In most cases, this works out just fine on your picture. Now, as always, the first step is to make a duplicate of your background layer. So go up here to where it says background, right click on the name, duplicate layer, choose OK, and then hide that. We'll be using that later on to change the background. On this layer, we want to select the image. Now, there are a couple ways of doing this. The new way, which is to go up here to select. And if you have one of the newer versions of Photoshop Elements, just use subject select right there. And let Elements do all the hard work for you. There you go. And it does a real nice job. If you don't want to do that, or if you have an older version, I'll just do Control D to deselect that. Then take any of your selection tools over here. An easy one is the quick selection tool. This usually works out pretty well. Bring my brush size up a little bit. Make sure we're on new selection. And then come in here and just paint in right up near the edge, not actually on the edge, just near the edge, and go clear around. And this gives you something which is very much or very similar to what you would get from the Select Subject tool. Just do that and fill that whole section in like that. Works out great. Or if you want to, you can also just use one of your lasso tools, make a lasso around here, and then use Refine Edge to clean that up. We'll just stick with this one. I think this is OK. Now, whenever we have hair in here, I always want to come back in and use Refine Edge to clean up the edges of the hair. Everything else is not going to be needing it, but the hair often needs that. And right here, if we zoom in, see the hair is sticking out beyond there. I'm going to take this and just paint clear out to that edge so that I include that hair strand inside of my basic selection. Do the same thing over here on the right-hand side. Now, the real fine hairs, you're going to lose those no matter what you do. So just pretend that those don't exist. They're going to be lost. There's no way around that. All right, let's now go ahead and take this to our next step, which is using the Refine Edge tool. Click on that. I normally have mine set over here at the overlay. It's just easy to use. It puts this red coloration on the area that's going to be masked out. And I'll usually leave all my settings at their default settings, which is nothing. Sometimes adding a bit of radius in can help. And sometimes a bit of contrast can help. But I tend to like to do those adjustments as a second pass instead of on my first pass. So that's all looking good. There's your brush size. You can change the brush size. It's over here. Where it says size, you can change your brush size right in here, but this is a good size. Now, notice I have a plus sign inside of a circle. The way you use this tool is you overlap that circle into what you want to find the edge for and leave the plus sign outside the edge and then paint right along that edge. It doesn't have to be exact. You can you know, kind of miss it a little bit. It's okay. It's just fine. But that's about where you want to have this. And what this does is it tells Photoshop Elements where you want it to go back in and take a more careful look at the edge it then re-examines that edge and comes in and makes a better selection. It's very good at doing that. So let's go ahead and come down here. Use the hand tool right here to push your image around. There we go. And then back to this tool. This is your refined edge tool. Now right here we have some background showing through her hairs over here, but it's a little ways in from the selection. The way I approach that is to come out here and then push into those areas. And that should do it. The hand should be fine. Again, move the image, click on that hand tool. You can then push the image around. Now, if you're used to using the space bar as a handle, you can't do that here because it does something else. If I tap the space bar, what it does is it shows me where I've used the refined edge tool. And you've used it right over here. And I've used it up around in here. This is nice if you want to make sure you're catching all of your edges. For instance, I missed that part here. Let's go back to that tool. And I can then brush in right along that edge. So that's how the normal space bar works. So it doesn't do the move tool. It goes over to this tool, but only if you're using Refine Edge. Tap it again and you're back to the standard view. So use this hand tool here to move your image around. 
And again, I'll come through and just catch all the edges of the hair. And we'll let Photoshop Elements do all the hard part for us. And down around through here, and then up in there. Okay, that's good. But you can zoom in and out. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse right now to zoom in and out. So you can do that without any problems. I'll show you where the control is to set that up in just a second. When you have your selection made, go over here, where it says output to, and I'll put this to a new layer with layer mask. So it gives you a duplicate layer, plus the layer mask is on there. And there we go. There's our background removed. Now notice we have a bit of kind of dark shading around here. That's for areas where there was dark in the background and it didn't quite catch it just right. We'll take care of that in just a moment. But first, go up here, edit, come down to preferences and general. And right here, there's that option to scroll with the scroll wheel. That's normally not checked. So if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, make sure you check that. It just makes things a lot easier for zooming in and out. Now to clean up these edges in here, what I recommend doing is coming down to the layer below that layer, go up here to layer, come down to new fill layer, solid color, choose okay, and then come in here, click anywhere you want to in this color picker and then drag upper left hand corner. That's a pure white and choose okay. We can now see where those edges are. Now go up here to the layer mask side, make sure you see that light blue outline around that. Now we'll use a couple of tools to fix this. The first one, I'll go over here and use this tool. This is the burn tool. You might be seeing the dodge tool up here on your tools panel. Click on that and then come down here, choose the burn tool. Let's set the exposure fairly low, about 25% is good. And then we just paint in here. And what it's going to be doing is making that area more contrasty. And that'll do two things. It'll tend to sharpen the area up, but that's okay. But it also gets rid of that kind of shadowing that you tend to get sometimes around here. You don't need to remove all of that. It should blend in with your new background pretty well, but that should take care of most of that problem. Now, sometimes like up in here, we get a little bit of that flyaway hair, but not that much. So do a little bit of this. Spacebar now works as the move tool again. So we'll do that and just go around the hair and just sharpening that up. Now, some things will need a little bit more work beyond this. I think we're okay across the top of the head up here. It's kind of messy over there. We'll take care of that in just a second. Let's go over to this side and then down this side over here. There we go. And then right down here, just a little bit in there. And I'm seeing a dark line right around the edge of this hand. More here, there we go. Now to fix this and some spots like this mess up in here, what you want to do is to change tools over here to the paintbrush tool, set this for a hard edge. Let's just scroll down a little bit. There's some hard edges right down here. Here we go. I think 19 is a good size in this particular image. And I'm using a hard edge tool because I'm coming right against this edge here. Now, if you want to be really good about this, go all the way, come down to brush settings, and let's change our hardness down to about 80%. The enter key. So it has just a little bit of softness to it. And I'll zoom in on this. And then carefully come in here and paint on the layer mask with your black paint right in against that edge. Now, if the background that you're going on to is a dark background, then you don't need to do this step. That little bit of a halo will just blend into your background and you're fine. Now make sure you don't go into the hand when you're doing this. You want to get just up against that light edge. You can leave just a little bit of a very, very thin dark line. That's okay. Now a lot of people say that I have a very, very steady hand. That's not actually true. What I have is a wrist rest for the mouse. So my mouse pad has a foam rest on it that I can rest my palm or wrist onto. And then I'm moving the mouse with just my fingertips. And that gives me much, much better and more careful control. If you're holding the mouse normally and you're trying to move the mouse with your whole hand, it gets very difficult to control that mouse. You want to be moving it with just your fingertips. And that's why I normally work with this. Okay, let's go around and take a look at our edges. That's all fine. It's a little bit rough in here. Now on the hair, let's switch our brush over and I want a soft edge brush for this. Let's take that 17 brush right there. So I want to have a little bit of a soft edge and just kind of soften that down just a touch. 
Then over here where it's flying out where it shouldn't, I'm going to take some of that out. Here we go. Not much, just a little bit so it looks more natural. And the space bar and everything else looks okay. Maybe a little bit of this stuff right in here. Just find a hair to follow along the edge of a hair and you should be just fine on that. And we're good over here. Be a little bit messy right down there. I'll clean that bit up right there. Again, doesn't take much. It's a little pixelated right here. I'll take out some of that pixelated stuff. Okay, zoom back out, and that's looking really nice. Now, before we move on over into doing the Christmas card on this one, I just want to mention that if you want to really learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and I cover everything, all the tools, all the panels, all the menus. I also talk about how to use the organizer, everything in there, and I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Go ahead and take a look at that. I think you'll find that the best way to learn. Okay, now that we have our image in here, let's place a new background onto this. So let's come down here where it says graphics, bottom right-hand corner, and you want this set here at backgrounds. We have by type and then backgrounds, and then You'll be up here someplace and scroll quite always down. Most of the Christmassy things are a lot further down in the list. Come way down here. Lots of good backgrounds, all kinds of different things. Like here's kind of a racing background. If your background has a blue triangle on it, that means it has to be downloaded from the internet like I just did there. There it is with a racing background. It's kind of a polka dot background. Again, it's going to download that real fast. There we go. What I want is right here. This is a Christmassy background. We'll bring that in. Now, once I have this in here, the poinsettias are very large. These leaves are very large. She's very small in comparison. So let's fix that. Back over here to layers. And up here to our image layer. Right-click on the name. Duplicate that layer. Choose OK. Let's just hide that original. I'm not going to make the size larger. I'm going to zoom out a little bit like that. Let's go up here to the Move tool. And with these control handles around the corners, if you don't see those, just hold the Control key down and tap the T key. And that brings up those control handles. Now take one of those corners and let's drag the image out and make her bigger on the page. Don't go too close to the top. You can adjust the left and right as you want. Normally, the way that a person is facing, there should be a little bit more space on the side they're facing. She's not looking that far to this side. She's almost looking straight over here. So they're centered and I think just back just a little bit gives you a better composition. Doesn't take much of a shift on that. Okay, now we have much higher contrast I'm going to make this image larger. Hold the control key down, hit the zero key. There we go. So as I was saying, we have much higher contrast outside and not on her. So we need to change her contrast for this. Let's back up on this layer here. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels control right there. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. And here's our levels controls. Notice how there's no real blacks in the image and there's almost no whites for one spike right there. I don't know what that is. Maybe something up in here. So take your left side. This is your blacks. Bring that up. That richens the blacks in. The midtones are controlled right here. We'll check that in just a second. Let's bring the whites in just a little bit. So we've increased the contrast very specifically by darkening our darks and lightening our lights. Now take the midtone control, move it to the left just a little bit, and then balance out your blacks again. And that's usually the best way to get good contrast in here on the image. Bring your blacks up, bring your whites up, lighten up the midtones, and then balance out your blacks. There we go. If you want to have more vibrancy in her color, she's not bad, but if you want to have more vibrancy, you can do that. Go up to the layer menu, come down to new adjustment layer, this time hue saturation. Again, check that same checkbox, choose okay. And where it says saturation, just pull it up just a little bit and adds a little bit more color into your image. I'm doing that because the background has so much color in it that she was kind of washed out. So I'm just bringing in a little bit more color into her image. There we go. And there's our Christmas card. So as you can see, when you have the back removed, it's then real easy to put anything you want back in there and make this into a whole different look. Now again, if you like this video and you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way is to make a complete training course. Check that link at the top of the description. Make sure you click on that thumbs up button. It lets me know if you liked the video or not. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. And I'll see you next time.